Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we're doing a reading for sign of Scorpio and keep in mind that this does not resonate for every Scorpio. If you'd like a personal reading, give me the first link in the description down below. Repeat that first link in the description down below for a personal reading. You can also find a bunch of other things there in the description. You can find my Etsy shop which has my tarot and my oracle cards on there. A bunch of things there on my Etsy shop in the description down below. You should have to go check that out. Go ahead and go buy something. Really appreciate that. Currently have a sale going on. I also find my shirt store, my website, different social media platforms I'm on, as well as Patreon. All that's in the description down below. If you'd like to donate to the channel, feel free to do so. I do appreciate donations here. So, Scorpio, let's start off with some prayers first. We have number 37, the goddess Kali over here. We have Kali, beloved wearer of the mala of skulls and marigolds. I bow to you. You are the way, the healing, the integrity, and the resolution. You are the blessing, both in chaos and in grace. I release fear and attachment to outcome. I become free and ready to receive and be held within your divine will. I choose to trust you unconditionally. I surrender all concerns to you now. And open to receive clear alignment with the highest path for resolution and release that brings spiritual benefit to all beings. Alright, something is in my eyeball. And we have number 29 with the goddess Quanian over here. Dearest Quanian, who sees from the highest perspective and knows the truths in all situations, please help me discern the best possible choices available to me. Bless me with the awareness that I need to make choices that support my deepest desires this lifetime. And my spiritual intentions be blessed and manifest. Help me see beyond the illusion. Beloved, into the deeper truth of matters. Sound your fruit so fierce with love and compassion and clarity now. Alright, Scorpio. That's prayers for you. Now let's see what spirit has in store for yourself. It's been a while since I used these cards. We have number 40 with Sorceress of Light. So this tells me that you're the Sorceress of Light here. Now we have an owl with like these seashell sort of earrings here. Let's just pull a couple of cards. And then we have number 43, Honor the Light. So you see that you're the Sorceress of Light. Now honor that light here, Scorpio. What's what it's telling you here? Okay. Let's read one of these cards because I actually don't even remember these meaning of this, this cards. It's been so long since I used this deck. If you don't like me reading out of the book, you're welcome to go elsewhere. Number 40 and 43. No enemy shall defeat you, not by night nor by day, not upon the earth nor in the soul. You are divinely protected and empowered. You shall fulfill your destiny with joy in your heart and laughter in your belly. Play, be in nature, feel the freedom of happiness within you even this moment. These are your sacred powers, and with them, you shall take every step on, upon your journey successfully, and nothing shall thwart your divine destiny. It says, ask for healing, mentoring, or assistance to support you now. This support will help you feel stronger and more empowered so to, as to deal with any challenge, and be assured that your spirit can handle it. There is spiritual protection for you now as you follow the guidance to explore conscious movement and creative self-expression. This can stir up old energy releasing it from you and allowing vital presence to take hold within you. You are going through an initiation in which you will need to reassess, oh, reassert your happiness and joy in any time it slips into the darkness of doubt, fear, or anxiety. Take time to dance, sing, drum, and affirm your aliveness with joy and courage. Become spiritually bolder in the face of anything that attempts to diminish you. Have faith in the power of the divine being, the supreme power. You're watched over by love. So it says, He, Aka, a goddess of Hawaii, watches over the sacred dancers of the hula in the arts of chant, sorcery, and medicine. Hers is the medicine of light, sound, and the ability to penetrate the darkness of lower-level consciousness, which could overwhelm our sense of spirit, joy, and heart, and inspiration with defeatism, despair, boredom, or even terror. This type of onslaught from darkness comes at certain times to those seeking to embody and enact light on earth, 
One of these times may be when we are feeling strong in making progress, and when we feel tested to sustain that higher level of being and awareness even through challenge. Another of these times may be when we feel weaker, more vulnerable, perhaps fatigued from a challenging time and not just quite able to summon the quality of our joy on our own. And all these moments upon the spirit's path of light. Yaaka, assist. This goddess is said to dwell in the grove of Lihu, the Hau trees, which are sacred to her as a place where she spent her time dancing with the forest spirits. It says her name translates as she who uplifts, or she who lifts darkness. It says high is lifting of the hip, and Aka means shadow. As patroness of sacred dancers, she reminds us that with the simple movement of our hip, we can move into the dance and connect with joy. It is said that one of the first things that a shaman will ask of a person who is plagued by demons, or in their modern parlance, unable to summon the energy for their truth of fulfillment and sacred purpose in the world is, when was the last time you danced? Dancing, whether literally moving your body to music, or symbolically in whatever makes your being light up. It's a way to invoke aliveness so that we can tap into the joy that counteracts darkness. Consider what makes you feel like your soul is dancing. Make time and space for it in your life as a practice for sustaining and strengthening your spirit. Part of this goddess's divine purpose is bearing the clouds, providing rain, thunder, and lightning. Her wisdom reminds us that mov movement in itself can be healing. When energy becomes stagnant, we can struggle. This doesn't mean we abstain from rest, because true rest allows energy to, energy to circulate through our being. This is why we emerge from the rest feeling renewed and refreshed. Movement to circulate energy means flowing in relationships with bodies, or with our minds, bodies, and souls. Trusting our inner rhythms. Most modern lifestyles make it difficult to live in an honest relationship with the mind and body. Be tricky to find the time and place to authentically and spontaneously honor our natural needs for expression and flow. So we summon our wisdom and creativity to find a way. This goddess says that we must. We must be willing to move with the storm wisdom within us, or we shall be moved by the storm wisdom around us. We'll be moved by those events which startle us from our routine when we are falling asleep rather than resting and living. Give yourself permission to explore a more authentic relationship with yourself and trust that in this process, the changes that will happen, and sometimes those changes will include how we live, work, and where we live, with whom we share our lives, will be healing. There's a healing process you can do. It says, here's a prayer of protection and affirmation. You can say this for yourself or over another on their behalf. In that case, speak the invocation as if it were them speaking the prayer. This is a way to offer spiritual service to them. However, if you offer this for another, know that you cannot force it to be received by their soul, and you must honor their free will to choose how they wish to live. It says, say aloud, may the light dance within my soul, lifting my mind from oppression and freeing my heart from restraint. May I honor my true nature and live my life with increasing honesty. May I attract endless divine love and protection to live this gift of my life in perfect fulfillment on all levels. I am dignity. I am wild grace. I am unrestrained being. I move in authentic truth, dancing sacred joy upon this earth. And then it says, You will know when you have truly spoken this prayer from the heart because you'll feel lighter, brighter, happier, and safe. You can repeat this as often as you wish. As you do, the words will build a field of sacred light and divine protection within your consciousness. It says you have complete, completed your healing process. Then we have number 43 over here. It says you are a light bearer. Your sole purpose is to redress the presence of darkness on this planet. Through the shining light, you are meant to do this in ways that feel most uplifting to you. What brings brightness to your spirit? Do those things. How can you create a loving legacy to remind others of the light? Exploring and expressing the light in ways that remind others to seek the light, too. It's a way to fulfill your destiny. Your light is powerful. Use it. It says people around you, perhaps even you, can sometimes get caught up in the troubles of the world and forget to focus on the light 
in their own creative power gently but persistently remind yourself and others to ask for divine help this can be done according to each individual's belief system prayers will be answered focus on the light at specific moments during each day place sacred objects in your line of vision so that you can see them and remember the light often you are a light worker light bearer one who is divinely de designed to receive and transmit light for the benefit of humankind and mother earth you have more influence in situations to bring about divine conclusions than you may realize. Don't be afraid to use your light in all possible ways. The great creator deity in the pre-Inca tradition from the Andes region is Veracocha, who is said to have risen from the lake. I don't know how to say that word, but either way. During the time of darkness to bring forth light. He made the sun, moon, and stars. In his wisdom teachings, this reminds us of the importance of creating numerous ways to experience and remember the light and to reflect it back to ourselves in the world. Creating things in our minds and our world reflect the divine light is vital. These could be simple altars, sacred spaces, beautiful sacred objects, or it could be the act of burning incense, playing beautiful music, doing a daily practice of meditation and oracle readings, pray, or conscious dance or art. Choose whatever it is that helps you honor the light and reinforces it as its authentic presence within your being. The regular practice, a radiance, will be ignited and is flamed, fanned within. Our soul becomes a lighthouse to help others find their way. Amplifying the inner light is a way to tap into your creative consciousness. Then, when you generate what you generate in this world through your thoughts and actions is what you actually want to share, which increases hope, goodwill, happiness, and peace in this world. It is said that this God made humans by breathing into the stones, but his first creation efforts were not pleasing to him, so he destroyed them with a flood and began anew for a better result. The symbolism of this speaks of allowing creative ideas to evolve. We do not be, need to be scared to let things fall away, to wash away clean, and to start afresh with our creative intentions. We can do this through daily, through prayer, and other ways to honor and strengthen the inner light of spirit. It says, for someone like you with a strong mind and the ability to broadcast thoughts and feelings more clearly than many around you, with a position and purpose of spiritual influence at a soul level, it is essential that you bring your mind in a way of being back into the light many times each day. If you get into a dark mood, it doesn't only affect you, it may well bring down many others. Even if you are alone, hiding from the world under a bundle of blankets, your darkness doesn't go unnoticed, unfelt. The more you grow spiritually, the more your own states of beings will have an impact in this world. This doesn't mean that you need to fear your own darkness. Rather, when it rises within you, your job is to recognize it and work through it without delay. You minimize the amount of time and grip that you give it in your own soul. And you practice authentically, bringing yourself back to the light. There is no magic in this. It is ability born of practice. The discipline to practice from, comes from a desire to be in the light. You can choose to be in the light for whatever reason. It could be simply that it feels good or that it connects you to great spirit. And you like that feeling. It may be that... Being happier makes you more attractive and magnetic to what you want to experience, or you want to brighten up someone's day and not darken their mood with your own. You may want to show gratitude to the divine, not discontent, and so forth. The point is that you figure out your best motivations to be in the light, and you practice putting yourself there again and again. It's a healing process. Say this prayer aloud. I ask for the divine blessings that my creations may be expressions of my true spiritual light. Bringing assistance to this world, I give thanks for the gift of my creativity and my ability to feel and know the light. May this light dwell fully alive within me, inspiring my creativity so that I am a source of loving radiance for those in need of this world. May, may joy always be at home in my heart, through my own free will, so be it. it. says, then contemplate something that you would like to create or a feeling you would like to experience more of in this world. Take a few minutes moments to imagine, visualize, feel, or pretend that you can build a light in your heart that holds all good feelings and happy visions around the situation that you wish to bring life into this world. When you are ready, imagine it rising up from your heart and flying towards the light of the sun, where it ignites into divine flame and returns to plant itself in the earth as a golden seeds. 
Feel good about these seeds, knowing that they are strong and healthy and blessed and will grow into maturity, bringing nourishment for the greater good. You have completed your healing process, Scorpio. You see that? So bring yourself back to the light here, okay? Connecting with these beings that we've mentioned throughout these readings. And there's something with dancing here as well. But you shall not be defeated here is what it's telling you. And it's like... I feel like you're creating something. There's something through a creative project where you bring, you're like, there's a lot of light within it, right? Something spiritual here that you are creating. And maybe it's going to be bringing people back to the light here as well. All right, so let's get some runes and charms yourself. So we have Hathor. You have number 11. That could have significance to you there. We have this dragon moon. There's a symbol of Kuan Yin over here. We have these two dragon lovers. One being fire, one being water. So you being a water sign, maybe your lover could be that of a fire sign. Either now or in the future. We have this green man which you're connecting to. White raven which you're connecting to. White raven being a symbol of peace, cleansing, purification, and so on. two stuck together. Okay, so we have Bastet, Anubis. We have a lot of gateways being opened in the self. There's abundance within yourself and in your external world as well. Okay, there's success here. So, that's all I have for you. Like I said, first link description down below for a personal reading. Also, go to my Etsy shop and go buy something. Really appreciate that. And if you want to see more content, don't forget to like, subscribe. Bye, guys.